this was the hit movie of Sundance. What was it like being in the middle of all that? Um, it's exactly the way you would imagine it. <clears throat> the way you dreamed it would play out, it was even be better than that. Um, I'd never been a part of a film festival, uh, film festival before, so um, it was completely unexpected and we had zero expectations. So even so the first reception opening night or opening day, it was like at noon on a Sunday, <clears throat> was overwhelming to all of us, quite emotional. And then it just kept growing and building, building throughout the entire week. And uh, I was just so excited to be a part of a film community it, yeah. that was discovering other directors <clears throat> that were all out there trying to get their voices heard and make movies. And, and we're so humbled that we were all brought together by, by the festival. And so the fact that we won a couple of awards towards the end was, was just icing because it, was, uh, it, was, it had been such a beautiful experience and the work was so good that uh, it was just humbling to be there. Yeah, I couldn't get into a screening. Like I said, it was packed. I hustled as much as I could. I couldn't get in we it. Had, we had producers that couldn't get into the after party. <laughs> yeah, damn it. But it's good things for the film. I, I love the movie when I saw it. The dialogue is so brilliant. When you got the script, could you see straight away how you wanted to do it visually? Certain sequences came to life pretty clearly. I love Jesse's. Jesse Andrews' script uh, and, and the dialogue that you just mentioned was was my way in uh, initially because I didn't want to when I had heard it was a high school movie <clears throat> it uh, didn't seem that exciting to me yeah. who am I to tell a movie that a high school movie today but immediately it had this timeless quality to it and I loved the characters especially Greg and 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 the Breakfast Club is as fresh today and original today as it was back then because it was authentic and it captured these real emotions and those are timeless and I think some of our high school years are so vivid and some of the hardest of our lives that we never quite forget them <clears throat> so no matter how old you are you carry those stories with you and that pain with you because when you're 13, 14, 15 I mean, uh, a breakup is the end of the world uh, yeah. <laughs> and where are you going to go to college I mean these are life decisions that you feel are going to uh, kind of uh, I don't know dictate the rest of your life and maybe they do maybe they don't but you just feel that they are that they will um, so I immediately responded to that and and started to doodle on the page. So that's usually when I'm excited about something. And, and then I was, I remember I had a little question mark in the first couple of few pages because how do I <clears throat> shoot a guy, how do I shoot a high school without looking like every other high school movie? Yep. A lot of question marks and sketches, but then then it, it really started to open up and then being able to, to celebrate movies and, and the four worlds, the high school world, her world, his world, Earl's world, <clears throat> and it just all of a sudden became quite a vivid to me. Just broad strokes initially, but uh, but I was I was hooked. Well, it is a very emotional movie, but I <clears throat> am a classic film nerd, so Great. I loved all those little remakes of the Forest. What's some of your favorites? Uh, I love Hitchcock, so I love Rear Window and Vertigo and Psycho, um, and of course Casablanca and movies like that, but. <clears throat> when you were creating these little remakes, was there one that you kind of you wish you could have made completely? Um, <laughs> as like a full feature version yeah. of the thing, well, Ed, Ed Burst and Ed, Ed Burst and Nate Marsh are responsible yeah. uh, for a lot of those. Um, I, you know, we tr I, there are some. The Mean Streets one. We actually have two clips from Mean Streets. We only use one of them, which is the classic. Uh, uh, Johnny Boy intro that mm -hmm. it, with Earl playing Johnny Boy playing De Niro as Charlie Boy but we also did another scene that I should actually Google the name of the song because I'm blanking on it because it may come up again which is the famous shot from that movie when Harvey Keitel is drunk at the bar oh, on the camera. Yeah. We did that with a sock puppet <laughs> but you needed <laughs> and it's really it kind of quite brilliant because they built a little set with little lights like a little bar and the sock and then the camera turns with the sock puppet over that great song I should remember what it is uh, and you could do the whole movie like that with sock pups, and I think it would sustain because it's so visually striking mm -hmm. and um, and so specific of a certain time um, that a combination of real actors like Earl playing Johnny Boy and maybe uh, Greg Gaines playing Charlie and then sock puppets as well could have made it a really interesting film. And then plus, there's never enough Scorsese. Scorsese. Nah. But uh, oh, there's so many of them. I, I think there's so many with with beautiful set pieces that I mean, we did a. Uh, you know, don't look now. The ending and don't look now, but I think it'd be some funny stuff if we have uh, sock puppets on gondolas in Venice. So. <laughs> Love it. I'd watch that. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you.